Hi there, and welcome back to Model 3 Mission. So now we are going to to talk about the, the mission applications that comes with this open phone. So first we're going to talk about block mesh. So it will be brief the discussion, but I want to remind you that with the deck of slides that you receive, you will have this one. Okay, so here we discuss in details many more options. So please uh, <clears throat> Please uh, open this slice if you want to learn a little bit more block mesh. Here we're going to address the basic stuff, okay, that we can do with, with block mesh. So first of all, it's a multi-block mesh generator, okay? You need to create a block, uh, a block in topology, okay? So the command to run is block mesh, and it will read this dictionary, block mesh dictionary that is located in the system. So, so far we have used it, but now we're going to learn a little bit more what is going on, at least when doing very basic meshes, single block meshes, okay? So these are the kind of meshes that you can do using block mesh, okay? And the Particularity about this one, and probably uh, for those who have used structural solvers or structural meshing techniques, this will be familiar for you. But look at here that this is a multi-block mesh. Mesh. We have to block block one and block two. So to do this one in this dictionary, in the input file for block mesh, you need to create this blocking topology. So in this case, it is straightforward. But since can start to get trickier, for instance, in this case, look at that. You need to create or this, all these block topologies. No need to say that here in the interface they need to be, they need to match the number of cells. I look at this one. This is what is called an all Greek topology. And what is happening here is that you need to create this, and see that how complicated it is this stuff. So even if this domain seems super simple, see that you have a curved edge. You, not, you need to add the curvature, the stretch, and everything. And this is probably the most complicated one. Here, so see that you have this one. So you will have the old grid topology, and then you go like this. Okay, so this is the idea of multi block meshes. Okay, so this I, I have to be the honest that these are the best meshes that you can generate, very good quality. However, to the, the effort to create this one is, is, is large. Okay, not only in block mesh, but in an, on any other external measure now that supports this kind of technique, multi block technique. So, we're going to focus just in basic single blocks. Okay, imagine that you take this block and that's all. Okay, that is the only thing that we need. I'm not going into detail how to create this one. Go to your supplement and there you're going to get a better explanation. Okay, because most of the time for industrial industrial geometries, you don't use this, this is too complex. So let's do it at this point. Okay, so when you create your, your single block, this is Okay, how the vertices and faces you now are, are numbered. So see that using this reference fit system, you want to create a hexa block, you no, know, a square block or a cubic block, and you create the vertices zero, one, two, three with the coordinate x, y, and z. Okay, four, five, six, seven. So you have here the coordinate, then the faces. So face, let's say face two is made out of vertices zero, four seven and three okay so look at here that you have it uh the order it doesn't matter how you rotate clockwise or counterclockwise it needs to be contiguous so you go from zero to three or from zero to four you cannot go from zero to seven okay so be careful about that and here you have your block okay you want to create a block and here is important the the order of rotation using this reference system so see that first you create a block zero one two three and then you move to the other phase four, five, six, seven, okay? So see here that you are rotating in counterclockwise, okay? Using this reference system, it is important, okay, that has to be counterclockwise. You put in the other rotation, it will give you a problem. You can try it. So my advice is just use this reference system, but it's the one you can change it, or even you can always use this and then just transform the mesh. It's up to you, but I always, this is for me is a parametric parametrical file, I always leave it like this, okay? I don't need, need to think. The only thing that I need to do is change the coordinates and I have my mesh, okay? So 
Let's go to this A directory. We're going to pay, uh, open the dictionary to see what is going on. Okay, so this is the single block that we're going to create. Okay, and the importance about this this block because then we're going to use a snappy xmesh, and in a snappy xmesh, the input file, the in, the input to create the mesh, we need a a, a block like this a background mesh or something like this. So this is why it's important to master this, to create these simple meshes, okay? So basically that file, the input file will be divided like this, okay? So see that here at the beginning, we declare variables, then all these are variables that you, you, you declare. So see that this file is pretty much parametrical, okay? So see that you clear variables and then you just give the coordinate of the vertices, okay? Declare, declare, and then use the dollar to use those variables. So here you give the coordinates that you are defining your, your domain. And what you see here, these are this is what is called call string or inline calculation. So by using this <coughs> numeral or pound or hashtag symbol, you can do inline <coughs> inline operations. Okay. So this is to come automatically compute the number of cells. So see that I say that I want a delta x and a spacing in, in x, y, or z like this, and automatically it's going to compute the number of cells that I'm going to, to, to need. So as you see here, this is parametric. Okay. It doesn't matter the dimensions of my domain, of the coordinates. You just put it here, give a dimension, and automatically everything will be done here. Okay. So this is the, the big advantage of having the master in this dictionary, but also having this dictionary parametric. Well, also I didn't mention about this keyword here. This is just to scale. Doesn't mean that you are converting from inches to meters, or whatever. It's just an scale factor. Just leave it to one. Uh, important when you do this in line calculation is that pay attention that here there are some spaces or parentheses. So just leave those parentheses because if, for instance, you raise this parentheses, when you run, it will give you an error. Okay. So be careful as it is explaining it there. Okay. Then you move along and you create the block topology, okay, as we mentioned previously. So in this reference system, you just connect it like that. And see here that you define here the number of cells that has been computed here. Okay, so everything done automatically and the grading. Okay, so in this case it's uniform, meaning that let me go back here, see that you have everything uniform in all directions, but you have the option as well to add grading. I'm not going to talk about that. Go to the supplement. It is explaining it there how to add grading. It's just changing your do, those coefficients. Okay. Then you have this entry edges to have to add curve edges. So for instance, you have a circle or whatever or a spline. You can add it here. So if you don't put anything by default, everything is a straight lines like we want. Okay. So again, if you want to know how to do this one, go to the supplement and it is explaining. And you can read it and then you go to the bottom and you find this entry boundary. So here's where you define, you give a name and a type to the boundary patches. So see that you select faces. Okay, so the face may all may, made out of vertices 0, 4, 3, uh, 7, 3. You call it mean x. This is the type and that's all. So here are you are assigning this at mesh in time. But remember when you create the mesh, you're going to have the file constant polymesh boundary and then you can modify this manually, okay? So you don't like the name or the types, okay? So you do it here. So everything is parametric. So I always leave it like this and then when you have that, your final mesh, you just can change these patches, okay? But inlet, outlet, top, bottom, whatever as you want, okay? Something that is, you can also group patches, okay? More than two faces, more than one faces in a single no, let's call it a boundary surface. So see that you can create, instead of having these two, you can create something like this back and front, tight walls, and you put it together, okay? These two, there is no problem. And this entry also, we don't need to use it. If you want to know what is happening here, you just go to the supplement. But here you, you can merge blocks, okay? So this is when you have multi, uh, multiple blocks, but this is single block, no need to do any 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 merging of, of, of blocks. So, this is the summary of what happens, and at the end of the day, we get this mesh, okay? Then when you create the mesh, you get the boundary file, and see that exactly the name and type that you are assigned here in constant boundary, you will have it here, okay? But remember that here you can change the name and the type, feel free, okay? So if you don't like this, you can change it. So we have six surface uh, boundary patches or boundary surfaces. Just change the name, and you can change the type, wall, patch, whatever. You cannot erase this, this keyword, okay? This is just to create groups. This is not necessary. So if you want, you just can erase this one. 
remember do not touch this information okay so this is something used by by open by open phone okay also if you don't define uh, surface boundaries or patches uh, there are all of them that are put automatically in this patch okay default faces type anti and groups anti okay automatically anything that you don't declare here automatically is put here okay so, so be be aware of that so at the end of the day this is what you have with these names okay and then you just can change that it is up to you you can change it manually you can use for a uh, create patches or you can use a uh, phone dictionary okay you have those three options sometimes i do it manually sometimes uh i use phone dictionary phone phone dictionary or create patches okay so this is how you run the case just to generate the image the parametrical file so you can just take it and also get it for you you know you have there this parametrical file you can also visualize the the, the block topology okay so if you type like this paraform minus block again you're going to use a plugin specific of open phone and you will be able to visualize that so the importance about block mention why we want to see how to use it but also how to focus in single block meshes is because the next uh in the next section we're going to talk about a snappy x mesh okay so this is the true measure the mesh that you are going to use for difficult meshes and the important thing here to point out is that the this mesh will read the geometry but also will use a background mesh and this background mesh needs to be a single block uh but not necessarily a single block but an x it needs to may be a, me a mesh made of hexes okay it's recommended so this kind of of background mesh is you can generate it very easy using block mesh okay so you can have your parametrical file and everything will be uh relative ease okay just Generate this one, put your geometry, and then we're going to see what is happening there, okay? So this is what you are going to get at the end of the day. Uh, some final remarks that, as I say, uh, you can do more elaborate meshes now using block mesh. However, it requires careful setup, okay? It's time consuming, it's very difficult. It's, it's very tricky to generate multi-block meshes. Even if you see this geometry seems very easy, it's quite tricky. So see that here you need to create the, those two blocks. Then here we have also the stretching, the old grid. Here we have two blocks and then you are merging the blocks, multiple blocks, okay? So again, you go in the supplements and you have an explanation of all those options there. So just to show you, okay, that let, let's go to the to our tutorials and you should have this let me go in 101 block mesh you have several tutorials but just focus on one is the one that we can use as a parametrical case okay that we're going to use all over and let me do some cleaning there and see that the only thing that you need to do is open the block mesh and that's all so see that here I have a parametrical. So you give the minimum and maximum value of your X, Y, and Z coordinate. Okay, so if you want a smaller or larger domain, it's up to you. Then define here a delta X, you not know, the spacing of the cells. I will show you later then that this is how the computation is done. Okay, to compute X cells, you put it here, and then the rest is leave it in a standard. Okay. So see that I'm calling like this. This is commented line. So see that you can call it back from top, bottom, left, right, or inlet, outlet, it's up to you, but I, I prefer to leave it min x, max, max x, and then you just rename this. So just to show you that, I run block mesh, and see that when it does this, meaning it means that it's computing this inline computation, okay, it's doing this inline computation. Let me point out something here, that is, you want to do inline computation, see what happens, if I don't put the space there, and if you run this again, okay okay let me erase this probably okay okay it worked there so this is not a problem but in this case let me raise this parenthesis and this is very important that you sh you should keep that second parenthesis so let's see this used to be a problem in previous version it's still in this one so see that it's giving this this error so it's very important when you do arithmetic operation, always put the values in parentheses, okay? 
or the other way is leave and space here. So, so now if I try to run, see that it is perfect. So let's visualize the mesh. So this is what we have, okay? And see that there you have the spacing, okay? This is spacing is 0 0.5 the one we define and just to prove and just to show you if you not, are not familiar with this new filter or source you go here in, in part of from part of view measure tools roller ruler and you can you have here a ruler so you can measure you press p and then press p apply and then see that the distance that you define like give or take now because i'm doing that in, on the screen but see that you have precisely that distance and just to show you now how hand is this if i change this to zero zero one zero one if i rerun automatically you now the number of cells that i need will be computed and this is our new mesh so see that clearly you see the effect there, okay? So my advice have this parametrical dictionary. So for instance, let's say that I want my domain and it will be external aerodynamics and in the X direction, I want to be 10 here. So just put 10 there, rerun, paraphone, and there you go. So see that you have with the right spacing. So now you put your body inside and we move now to the next uh, meshing tool, okay? So before ending here, also just to show you paraform minus block, is you want to check the block topology. So in this case, a single block, okay? So see that you have the index of the, of the vertices, okay? And See here that you can select to show points. You have one single block. If you have curved edges, you can see that. So this is a specific, no plugin for, for, for block mesh, okay? So if you want to spec that. So it's relatively easy in single block, but you have multiple blocks, you will see that <coughs> you have many blocks and you can see all the index, okay? So it's a visual reference, that's all. Okay, let's also explore the, the, the boundary file. So remember that when you create the mesh, this file in constant poly mesh. Okay, let me go and create again block mesh. Okay, you go here in you are in constant poly mesh. This file is created automatically after you generate the mesh or, of converted. Okay, so see that here you have the name of the patches, mean, max, mean, y, whatever, and the type. Okay, so here you will get the same name that as you define in block mesh. Okay, but remember you can say, you can change these, these names, okay? So for instance, if I don't like that, this one I can call it inlet. I can call this outlet. Then here I'm going to have a delicious boundary condition. So I need to put a patch. And patch, we already worked it out in the first tutorials, as I mentioned. This is not needed, so you can erase it. And this is what you do, okay? So you can do it manually, give your proper names. Then when you create the file zero, okay? Remember that you have zero boundary conditions and the initial conditions, the boundary conditions, the name of these, those surfaces needs to be the same that you have here. And then you need just to match the, the type of boundary conditions to define all the different uh, numerical types, you know, the relation, Newman or, or, or Robin, that's all you need you need to do okay so again uh let me close okay let me i will let it open so if i launch now paraphone you will see that when i open paraphone here or part of your whatever see that now you are accessing you have the new names okay so you can change the names like that okay it's not a big deal so there is another way to change the names, okay? So uh, here I did it manually, but also you can use the, there are two additional tools, okay? I know I don't have the dictionaries here, but probably you have seen in previous tutorials that I'm using the tool create patch, okay? So if you type phone info, remember, it will give you some information. What is this tool doing, okay? So you're going to have a master dictionary that is going to, to change that and also the other tool is phone 
dictionary okay dictionary so it's telling you how to change no okay how to use it and this you can use it to do to rename different entries in your input file so it can be very hand, handy when you want to do things automatically okay so look for this to create patch in previous tutorials or phone the dictionary okay look for this to how how, how I, I use and then you will get an idea okay so you can do it manually you can use this one or you can use this one okay so sometimes i do it manually and sometimes you will see that I'm going to use these utilities to do some renaming as in a later tutorial, so I'm going to show you, okay? But just look for the information so you get familiar with those commands. So let's move at this point. I, I think we, 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 we are done with uh, block mesh, okay? So as I, let me just, uh, to mention again that we are using a block mesh at the basic level okay just creating single blocks because that is the input for the snappy x mesh okay so for us it's just enough to understand know how <coughs> this basic tech talk and how parameters parameterize the dictionary but if you want to know more complex things and so go to the supplements okay so that's all for block mesh see you in the next videos where we are going to start to address snappy x mesh thank you for your attention and bye